Hello, in this video, I'll be investigating the function of the dented gyrus in order to teach you more about the hippocampus. After all, the hippocampus is the sum of its parts, including the dented gyrus. So one subregion of the hippocampus is the dented gyrus. The dented gyrus has functions involving mnemonic or simple memory processing of spatial information, the formation of episodic and spatial memories, and the spontaneous exploration of novel environments. The dented gyrus also plays a role in depression. The dented gyrus acts as the input region of the hippocampus and serves as a pre-processing unit. Specifically, information from the enterhenal cortex directly enters the dented gyrus and is processed by the dented gyrus and then the processed information is delivered to the CA3 region of the hippocampus proper. The processing uh, the dented gyrus may perform includes pattern separation, which is uh, separating relatively similar input patterns into distinct and uh, or unique output patterns. The dented gyrus is required for working memory and spatial navigation. The spatial navigation and memory is highly dependent on the dented gyrus. In an experimental study that destroyed the majority of the dented gyrus in rodents, they show that the rats experience extreme difficulty in maneuvering through a maze that they uh, have been through before the dented gyrus was destroyed. When the rodents without the dented gyrus were tested a number of times to see if they could learn the maze, the scientists found that the rats tre uh, treat the maze um, every time as if they were seeing it for the first time. In other words, the rats without the dented gyrus could not improve and thereby could not learn the maze, showing a severe impairment to working memory. The rats could not consolidate learned information about a maze through their working memory and could not remember previous navigation through the same maze. To summarize, the study indicates that the dented gyrus is needed for working memory and the memory consolidation functions of spatial information required for navigation. Significance of LTP and neurogenesis in the dented gyrus. The dented gyrus is one of the regions of the brain that experiences LTP. Generally speaking, long-term potentiation or LTP occurs in the hippocampus for the formation of new memories. LTP is the long-lasting strengthening of synaptic connections after repeated stimulation, so when a piece of information is repeated again and again, the dented gyrus preserves that information in the form of strengthening certain synapses. Again, this is LTP. The dented gyrus is also one of the few brain structures that have high rates of neurogenesis in many species of mammals, like rodents and primates. An increase in neurogenesis of the dented gyrus is associated with improved spatial memory in rodents. Neurogenesis in the dented gyrus helps with the storage and processing of spatial information. So how would neurogenesis help with information processing? Well, some scientists hypothesize that newly formed dented gyrus cells or neurons may be used preferentially to store uh, newly formed memories. And through this mechanism, memories from new uh, dented gyrus cells can be compared to memories from older dented gyrus cells, allowing the distinguishment of newer memories from older memories at the same location. Similarly, the dented gyrus has a pattern separation completion function that relies on neurogenesis. The role of the dented gyrus in pattern separation and completion. The dented gyrus possesses a dual function pertaining to pattern recognition. Specifically, the young dented granule cells mediate pattern separation, whereas older dented granule cells contribute to pattern completion. Quoting the study, adult born granule cells a minor population of cells in the hippocampal dented gyrus are highly active during the first few weeks following functional integration into the neuronal network, distinguishing them from less active older adult born granule cells and the major population of dented granule cells generated developmentally. We made a transgenic mouse in which the output of old granule cells was specifically inhibited while leaving a substantial portion of young granule cells intact. These mice exhibited enhanced or normal pattern separation between similar contexts that was reduced following the removal of young granule cells by X-ray irradiation. Furthermore, mutant mice exhibited deficits in rapid pattern completion. Therefore, pattern separation of similar contexts 
requires adult-born young granule cells, while old granule cells are unnecessary, whereas older uh, granule cells contribute to the rapid recall by pattern completion. Our data suggests that as adult-born granule cells age, their function switches from pattern separation to rapid pattern completion. So to summarize, the study found that the new neurons in the dented gyrus have the function of pattern separation, whereas the older dented gyrus neurons have the function of pattern completion. What does that mean exactly? To break it down for you, pattern separation is the ability to distinguish one pattern from another, whereas pattern completion is the ability to complete or finish a partial pattern. A linguistic example of pattern completion is to be or not to, to, uh, to look before you, and time in tide waits for. Although you do not have the full pattern, you should be able to tell what comes next because your brain completes the pattern for you. Likewise, the dented gyrus mediates pattern completion, but particularly for spatial data. Although the dented gyrus may be able to deal with different types of information, it mainly deals with spatial information. And if you think about it, spatial information mainly comes from our environment. An example of pattern separation done by the dented gyrus is if we revisit a location, we will be able to notice the changes that have occurred from before and now. This is also a way that the dented gyrus allows us to notice time because with time, space also changes. To reiterate, if you revisit a location, say the park two times, you will be able to discern the two events from each other through pattern separation. An example of pattern completion done by the dented gyrus is if you only acquire bits and pieces of spatial data from a revisited environment. You will be able to recognize that environment or location from those bits and pieces. For example, if you mostly forgotten the time you spent in the city of New York or another place, or if the city that has mostly changed, you will be able to remember this environment in your previous experience by looking at the remaining landmarks and locations that you still remember. That would trigger further memories of what was before, like how certain buildings changed or empty parking lots that now have skyscrapers, etc. Together, the pattern completion and separation functions of the dented gyrus can help a person identify spatial structures that change with time. In other words, the dented gyrus may help us notice the passage of time by identifying the changes in an environment. Maybe because adults experience lower levels of neurogenesis in the brain and the dented gyrus, they may perceive time as moving faster than in their childhood. You may also want to note that the CA3 region of the hippocampus proper also possesses pattern separation and pattern completion functions. The role of the dented gyrus in stress and depression. The dented gyrus is also involved in depression and stress. Specifically, the level of neurogenesis in the dented gyrus and perhaps other regions of the hippocampus affects depression. So controlling the level of neurogenesis in the dented gyrus may be a way to treat depression. Indeed, chronic antidepressant treatments work specifically by raising the level of neurogenesis in the dented gyrus and other regions of the hippocampus through increasing levels of serotonin. Other factors that increase the level of neurogenesis in the dented gyrus includes aerobic exercise and environmental enrichment or stimulating the brain through learning. So technically, antidepressants, aerobic exercise, and environmental enrichment are all factors that can improve mood and lift depression. Um, on the other hand, stress can cause depression by lowering uh, neurogenesis in the dented gyrus and other hippocampal regions. Specifically, stress causes the activation of the sympathetic nervous system thereby causing the release of glucocorticoids like cortisol. Chronic elevation of stress hormones in the body causes the hippocampus to atrophy or shrink, and chronic stress inhibits neurogenesis in the dented gyrus. So you should be able to tell that stress can have a very bad effect on the mind and a person's learning ability. To summarize, depression could be the result of a loss of neurons in the hippocampus caused by the chronic stress whereas factors that improve neurogenesis may be able to lift depression and improve mood by reversing the loss of neuron neurons in the hippocampus. 
Note that the process of increasing hippocampal neurogenesis doesn't spontaneously cause neurons to grow, possibly explaining why some antidepressant medications may take some time until it can treat the depression. And given that much of the brain's neurogenesis is limited to the dentate gyrus, one may conclude that the health of the dentate gyrus or its rate of neurogenesis may influence a person's mood. Personal notes concerning stress, depression, and the dentate gyrus. So I previously mentioned that glucocorticoids, aka stress hormones, can negatively impact the function and health of the hippocampus and the dentate gyrus. But where do stress hormones come from? Well, their production may be stimulated in the body endogenously, or they may come from an outside source exogenously. An example of an endogenous glutocorticoid is cortisol and adrenaline released in response to excitement or fear. And an example of an exogenous gluto uh, glucocorticoid are those consumed from the meat of sickly caged farmed animals, like chickens, because their poor uh, living conditions and diet causes them to experience a high level of stress, which in turn causes their meat to saturate with glucocorticoid stress hormones. My personal insight that I would like to share is that a person's stress level can increase quite significantly when their diet is poor. Poor digestion or a poor choice of foods influence the type of microbial populations that dominate in the gut. For enhanced cognitive function, it is better to consume more vegetables and some fruits because the fiber they contain as a prebiotic. Food for growing populations of good microbes or probiotics, whereas too many uh, processed foods influence the population of microbes that aren't as good for cognitive function. The microbes in your gut are relevant because they are basically pharmaceutical factors that output many different uh, neurotransmitters. In fact, the majority of serotonin in the body is produced by bacteria. Revisiting the topic of processed foods, they also lack quite a bit of natural antioxidants, which are invaluable for healthy cognitive function. Antioxidants help protect against oxidative stress, so a diet deficit in natural antioxidants results in the brain experiencing increased oxidative stress, which inhibits neurogenesis. So overall, the dentate gyrus is a part of the hippocampus that possesses functions important for spatial navigations, pattern separation and completion, and regulating mood and thereby behavior. And so these functions are a part of the functions of the hippocampus itself. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments below. I'd appreciate if you like and share this video and subscribe to my channel. Bye!